And Memphis is always taking pride in special teams. And it was a it was a bit of a I don't know if you remember how Coach Bankins got hired, but it was a bit of a odd yeah. situation. Uh, Drew Svoboda, I think right. that's how you came that over name. from came over from Duke. Yep. Right. No. And then was, I don't was think it was Duke? Duke. I don't think it was Duke. I think it was a smaller school. It was Rice. I'm pretty sure he was Pete Limbo's. Oh, uh, yes, it was Rice. I'm sorry. I don't know where I got Duke from. Yeah, it was it was Rice. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure he was he was at Rice. Uh, and then it, he, and then he got Limbo's replacement at Rice, and then they and then he got over. the call from the mothership. He got the yep. call from the SEC, baby. <laughs> yep, from Alabama, from you know best program in the country. So a tough break there, and it was kind of a scramble to find the new one at that point. And and Bankins just hasn't done a great job. Memphis's special teams have been in the bottom half of mm-hmm. the country, somewhere between the 80s and 90s over the last two years. And it was it really was a tough break because Mandra Savoda, it's a tough one to pronounce. Yeah. But uh, it, obviously they found a really good one because if Alabama pulls them away from you immediately, then you did something really well. And so, what I guess with all that being said, right? Like Silverfield's done a good job at finding these guys. You know, right. even if Bank wasn't necessarily uh, the best fit at Memphis, I think he's he's clearly done a good job of identifying. We know how much Silverfield values special teams, um, so I'm sure he'll he'll be able to find a solid replacement there. What is it you mentioned a few minutes ago about you? You kind of highlighted, you know, former special teams coach in Pete Limbo, um, and you know Charles Baskins and and or Bankins, excuse me, um, and kind of how the drop off in terms of special teams play has been. What makes a good special teams coach? Compared to, because we can see it a lot of times. Special teams is, especially as a layman, is like just kick the ball, just kick it far, just kick it this, that, and the third. Like, what is it that makes a good special teams coach compared to a not a good special teams coach? Not saying Man, that coach, not saying that coach Bankins yeah, is not no, a good special no, teams coach. Yeah, I know. No disrespect, to Coach Bankins. Um, okay, so I think a lot. The I think a lot is recruiting, right? how good is your recruiting classes? Because who's playing special teams? The guys that are going to be playing, you know, offense or defense in two years. Right. So you got to have good recruiting classes that you bring in, you know, talent in. You have to have base talent anyway, right? Because those depth right. guys are the ones that play special teams. So you have to have good depth. And really, when it comes to special teams, like, it's such a weird, untalked about part of the game, right? Because most of us don't even know, like, what are the schemes? Like, what do they do? Like, don't they all do the same thing? And the truth is, no, they do completely different things. Like, if you watch pump formations and kickoff returns and all these things, uh, the way that they do actual kickoffs, they're all different. Like, uh, special teams coaches are, like you said, mad scientists because they see the game completely differently. So I, I think it comes down to a buy-in in it, right? Like you've got – so, okay, here, this time I'm going to break it down. So from a from a common fan perspective, like special teams – some people think special teams kind of goofy, right? Like it's like, why do we do this? Why are we kicking a ball? Why are we – whatever. So if that mentality is adopted into the team, your special is going to be good. If your team doesn't think special teams are important, then it, then they're going to suck. And I'm not saying that's the case here. I'm just laying out like a basic overarching view of this. Um, so you have to have a buy-in. You have to you have to allow your players to see how important that is because at, at the end of the day, it's a third of the game. You got offense, defense, and special teams. Right. So 33 percent of the game is is special teams. Right. And we've seen time and time and time again in college football how important it is, how it can change games. I mean, one of the most game changing was a block punt or a block field goal because it adds so much intensity yeah. or a kickoff return or a punt return because it's it's something you don't see as much so it completely fires the team up mm-hmm. so it's extremely important and when you get players to buy into that when you have a system that fits your talent and i think that's a big thing because i, I think something we saw with limbo is limbo has a very specific style of special teams that he runs and he tweaked minor things for the players that he had because if you go watch what he's doing in South Carolina now, it looks a little bit different optically. You know, it, it's not it's not much. It's very small details that are tweaked. But you ha- you have to have guys that are willing to adjust their system with the talent and with what the team can do, even if it's really minor and almost unnoticeable. 
it has to be where it fits your team perfectly. So I know that's a bit of a complicated and complex answer, but special teams are complex and complicated. It's very, it's a very untalked about and very, uh, very different part of the game from offense and defense because that's something most people are so familiar with.